Hi, and welcome to another street photography video with me, Nick Turpin. In this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know to sell your street photographs as limited edition prints. If you're thinking of selling your photographs as prints, as limited edition prints or non-edition prints, the first thing you have to ask yourself is, am I being realistic? Uh, do my photographs have the qualities that uh, are required for people to want to hang them on their wall? Uh, for most part, street photographs tend to be purchased more in book form. People, pe people tend to like to flick through a book and see a collection of street photographs. Um, it's not the kind of thing on the whole that they want to buy a print of and uh, look, at every, look at every day on their wall. Once you've decided to go down the route of offering limited edition prints, you have three further decisions to make. First of all, uh, what print sizes are you going to offer? Secondly, how many of each of those sizes are you going to make available? And thirdly, what are the prices going to be? So I think these three decisions are largely guided um, by the fact that you want to make prints available to to anybody who likes your work, whether they be a collector, perhaps at the top end of the market, whether they be a corporate buyer looking to buy something for a boardroom or reception in the middle of the market, or whether they be a residential buyer, someone who's just seen your work in a magazine or, an, or in an art gallery, and, um, and they want to buy a print for over the fireplace. Uh, so here's an image from On the Night Bus. This is On the Night Bus uh, number three. Um, this is the smallest print which I offer. Uh, this is 50 centimeters wide, and there are 15 of these. Um, they're generally aimed at residential buyers. This is the one I aim at corporate buyers. So this is 60 centimeters wide and um, there are 10 of these available. And then the biggest image on the table here you can see, which is the one I aim at collectors. Uh, that's one and a half meters wide and that's sort of the exhibition print size. So those are the three uh, sizes of, uh, and editions that, that I make available. Now the quality of your prints is very important. They must be as archival as you can possibly make them. Um, now most modern printing techniques are, are pretty archival. Uh, I choose to have lambda prints made, which are archival chromogenic prints, and they, uh, you know, they have the same life expectancy as a traditional C-type print. So my general workflow for producing a, a limited edition print um, is to get it exactly the way that I want it on my system at home. Um, I get an ICC profile, an International Colour Consortium profile, from uh, the printers. Um, I use the print space in London, but you know there will be uh, quality digital printers all over the world. Um, and once I've converted it to their profile and made the necessary adjustments so that the picture retains its original quality, uh, I then save those and upload them to the servers of the printers. Uh, they'll do a test print for me, an artist proof, and I'll go in and look at that. Sometimes I'll be very happy with it, sometimes I want to make changes. Um, but once I've got the digital file the way that I want it, producing a beautiful print, um, that will be saved and that will be the one that I use for the entire edition. This means that I don't print all of the edition in one go. I print them as uh, people order them. Um, and just so I can keep a track of who's bought what, I keep an edition book. Uh, this can be literally something that you write with a pen and paper or it can be um, you know, a spreadsheet on your computer. So here's the edition book that I'm keeping for on the night bus projects. Um, uh, and as you can see in the first column, I have the name of the person who's bought the print. That's very important. I've uh, blocked those out for reasons of privacy, obviously. Um, then I have the image number. So every picture it, uh, has, its, has its unique number, and I make a that, note of that here so I know who's bought what. Uh, then there's the size. So each print is available in three different sizes. And here I make a note of which size each person bought. Um, and then I, I make a note of how much uh, each person paid. Obviously, every print size uh, is a different price. Then the edition number. Uh, this is how I keep a track of, of uh, how many have been sold of each picture at, at each size, and it allows me to know how to number the prints on the back. Um, here I make a note of whether the person has paid, that's a very important column, and then the status of the situation, whether, it's been, whether the print has been printed, uh, whether it's been delivered or shipped. Now it's nice if you can get a gallery to represent you. Um, lots of photographers, uh, probably more art photographers, have uh, galleries representing them around the world. Um, but uh, you know things are changing very quickly, and I think in this day and age, if you have a big following online and um, you know you have a good public presence, uh, it's quite possible to sell uh, prints through your own website quite successfully. Um, and obviously, the advantage of doing this is that you don't end up giving uh, something like fifty percent to somebody else. So um, you know all the prints that I sell are are through my website, and I take uh, obviously one hundred percent of the uh, of the payment. So uh, on the page, on my page, I show um, the prints available for, for sale. Um, 
And one of the important things is to have the title of the image up here and the date that it was shot. Um, and then I make it clear what I'm actually selling. So these are archival chromogenic prints. They're numbered and they're titled and they're signed on the reverse. That's what people are going to get. And then I um, make clear the sizes, the edition numbers and the prices. So there's a 350 by 500 millimeter edition of 15 there for 420 pounds, a 420 by 600 mil edition of 10 for 980 pounds, and then the biggest size, 10, uh, 1060 by 1520 millimeters edition of five for 2,400 pounds. So that's all the information really that you need. Um, I ask people to email me so that I can have a discussion with them about what it is they want to buy. And some, sometimes people want to buy you know, a set of four, for example. Um, and uh, I find it I find it a, a better way of doing it than just having a PayPal button, um, and that's worked that's worked pretty well for me so far. So once you have your editions established and you have them available on your website, um, it's really just a matter of uh, letting everybody know, uh, promoting that fact through your social media. Um, often, if magazines uh, publish, uh, you know, my, my images, sometimes it'll be for no fee, but I insist that they uh, link to my my print editions page. Um, uh, so basically, when somebody sees one of those and orders one, I will log into the labs um, in my digital printing labs uh, online system, uh, and I will I'll, I'll order a print. For 24 hours later, that print will be done. I'll go into the lab and I will sign, date, um, title, and number uh, that print uh, using uh, the number from the edition book, which I'm you know keeping up to date. Uh, and then that will be uh, usually rolled in tissue paper to protect the, the image size, the image uh, surface, uh, and then rolled into a thick cardboard tube. And that'll, that'll generally be shipped either by Royal Mail or you know, Land Mail or by FedEx, depending on how quickly the print has to be there. Now, I've sent out hundreds of these prints over the years, and uh, fortunately, I've never had one damaged and never uh, had one lost. When I go in to sign the prints, um, I usually uh, take a spirit-based pen, uh, I like these Steidler uh, permanent markers. Um, so being spirit-based, they dry very quickly, which means you don't have any problems when you roll the print up. Now, most buyers are happy with the print to be signed and dated and numbered uh, on the reverse. Uh, some collectors have asked me for uh, certificate, certificates of authenticity, and I produce those um, happily if, if buyers need them. Um, but on the whole, you know, people are very happy with a handwritten signature as verification that uh, the print is, is produced by, by you, the artist. So there you go. That's a quick and basic introduction to offering your images as limited edition prints. Um, even as a documentary photographer or street photographer, there's absolutely no reason at all why, why print sales shouldn't become you know, a reasonably significant part of your income. Um, I don't think these days it is, it is absolutely necessary to you know, have gallery representation in order to do that. I think if you, um, you know, build a good following online, you're doing interesting work, you have great ideas, you're doing good projects, um, and, and also that you're getting that work out there, you know, in printed form and exhibitions, uh, published and so on, um, there's absolutely no reason why you can't make a success of this. Um, if you have any questions about what I've uh, spoken about here, leave them in the comments below and I'll do my very best to answer them. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, just grab your camera and uh, get out there. <laughs>